I am an artist. I want to show you before the place where I do my art. This is my creative space. But I'm also a scientist. And this other one is the space where I do my science. They are very different spaces, but they have something in common. And probably I know what you are thinking about. Chaos. <laughs> they are very messy. And they are. But it's not my fault. <laughs> it's time the problem. It's time that shapes those spaces the way they are. A time can shape any space around us, even the space of an organism, like our body, because our bodies are spaces. And today I will show you an idea of time can, that can make uh, us see the, the space around us from a different uh, perspective. I think it's an interesting perspective. But before, I want to show you where my obsession with time started. It started in this place. This is one of my paintings. It's called Florence Street Number no. 1. It depicts my family furniture shop. It's a space where I grew up in Italy. And the black spots that you see in the paintings are the hundreds of pieces of furniture that me and my family had to arrange and rearrange in a soccer field-like space to make a beautiful displays. And of course, we were just trying to catch the attention of potential buyers. At that time, I didn't think that what I was doing in my family furniture shop was art. It was uh, only years later, long after the shop was closed, making paintings like this, that I realized that the experience of the shop brought me my way of seeing the space around me kind of extra dimension, which is time. Then I start to bring ideas of time in my art. And to clarify them, I start to do what I call time performances. I choose an action, a very simple action, like open and close a door, and I repeat it hundreds of times, like a human clock. And uh, this is my way to think about time, not just with my brain, but with my entire body. And during the performance, I am time, I become time, and I even paint time. I choose a, a simple sign, like in this case, it's a dot, I repeat it many times. Then I change the size, I repeat it another time. Then I change the color another time, and every color is a different time because different is always the action. And the final paintings is like this. Is, uh, normally these paintings are very big, uh, full of times. And when I make these paintings, I really feel like a, a music conductor that starts to orchestrate all this timing and do the final, uh, uh, make the final music. And then I make variation of these, and I change the music. And every painting, is a different music. It, the experience of the performance really made me um, understand what is, what is time. First of all, time is not repetition. Repetition makes us reproduce time. There is a beautiful definition from Aristotle that says, time is before and after then everything that can make or can show us a before and an after can show us time. What is this thing? An action. I touch my hands, you hear the sound. In science, we call this cause and effect or causality. And uh, Time is really everywhere around us because every element, every object or living thing can go from a before and after, probably in, this, in different ways. And uh, every element around us has a different time value. And let me explain with an example. This is the space of my studio. There are three main elements in this space that define the space. 
One is the world, another one is the chair, another one is the, a body, myself. The wall has the longest time value of the scene because it stays there for a long time without changing. There is no much of cause effects or before and after, while the body at any moment can change position and when it go from a before to an after. And the chair has a time value between the body and, uh, and the wall and so on. Every element can have a different time value. And this is interesting because actually it's the time value that defines the space the way, they, the way it is. It's the long uh, time value of the world, the fact that the world stays there for a long time, that makes our room and makes the room of my studio in this case. While the body gives a small contribution to the, time, to the, to the space, because at any time it can move, and when it moves, redefine a bit the space. And the contribution of the chair is something between the body and the, and the wall. Now, if you think of time in this way, you can start to use it. You can play around with the element of your space and tune it. You can make your space more kinetic, adding smaller time values, shorter time values, or you can make your space more peaceful, adding longer time values. And this was exactly what I was doing in my family furniture shop. We were looking for the right time value that defines and makes the space interesting and beautiful. And as an artist, I'm looking for the right time value that balances the composition, or unbalances the composition. And this is another uh, time painting. And uh, I leave it to you to understand where the time values are in those shapes. And there are right time values. If you try to understand how much time is in your living space, you realize that there is no small, short time values, or very short time values, and no very long time values. Normally, you'd find short time values in a space under construction, in your home, when you build your home, that the space is uh, under constant redefinition. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't like to live in a space under construction. Uh, we don't like uh, long, uh, long time value neither, because uh, that is like a jail. In a jail, everything is made to be static. You can't even open a door. Then there are. And then we can, est we can extend this idea of time to the space of, uh, of our body, because our bodies are spaces and cells are the defining elements. And this is where my science overlaps with my art. When I was uh, working on these ideas of uh, temporality in art, at the same time, as I was working as a, as a scientist, uh, finding the molecular mechanism that regulates the shape of cells and organs, the space of cells and organs. Very similar problem. Let me show you one organ. This is called neural tube. It's the future brain of a fish, in this case. It's an important organ. The space of this, uh, this organ is made by cells, by a defined structure of cells, two bands, kind of road-shaped cells, kind of like small pencils. And uh, those cells, they should have the right time value. And we had a way to understand the time value of those cells. I developed a way to take single cells from uh, different organs, different cell types, a different organism, and uh, make them resemble the same size that they have inside organs, in this case inside the brain, this rod-like shape. I'm going to show you the time lapse. This is the time lapse of, the, of a cell that changed the shape. And with our surprise, when uh, we look at the cell, we found the cells remain in the same shape for a long time. The cells are a long time value. It's a bit like the world that defines the space around us. 
And we found the molecular mechanism that regulates that long time value of the cell. And when we apply a perturbation to that uh, long time value inside the brain this time, the space of the organ changed. Then really the time value, the, uh, right, the, the cells should have the right range of time value to define the space of the, of the organ because a perturbation can uh, shift the range of time values, it change the organ. Then really this is, uh, should be important because a perturbation to the, to the time values of the organ can uh, give rise to malformation and uh, even what, I what is called what is known as a cancer, because cancer is the redefinition of a, of a space, of an organ. Now, if you think of time in this way, you realize that uh, the space around us is a bit like the space, uh, the, the, the space that nature made. And uh, everything, all the, the, the space, all the space around us is a bit like a, a big organism. Um, today I gave to you a very simple uh, idea of time, but around us there are so many other dimensions. And I really think that we should be open to receive them and make them part of our life. Because when we do that, doors open. We understand we experience more. Thank you.